Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom in my cabin. Going to be going hockey season starting right away. I uh, haven't been doing too many videos because I've been doing all that summer stuff. But you know what? I thought I got the itch, and I heard some amazing stuff about Jacob Chickren. I already did two videos on this dude, man. Is he ever going to move? Looks like looks like it now. This time I mean it. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to look at two articles. Talk about Jacob Chikrin and uh, where exactly he may go and all of those sort of things. And we are going to look at Jacob Chikrin, what he's all about. Arizona Coyotes, what they would need. Uh which I can just probably guess most of you already know. And we're going to look at about seven teams that could have interest in Jacob Chikrin. Two, some of them are have been rumored. Some of them I just feel like this would really be good for them. Um, and we're looking at salary, all that kind of stuff like that. So make sure you're subscribing to my channel, boys and girls. Uh, there we have, I'm part, all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. So subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do this stuff all the time and I love to hear from you. And I'm sorry, I'm in my cabin. The lighting is terrible. If I blinded you with my bald head, you'll survive, I guess. <laughs> all right. Let's get to her. Jacob Chikrin wants out of Arizona, says the Hockey News. Hockey News, still going strong. I used to collect all of them when I was a kid. Loved myself some Hockey News when I was a kid. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, now I just check it out every once in a while online like most of us do, right? Um, on Wednesday, Arizona defenseman Jacob Chikrin has been a part of trade speculation for months. Wednesday, which was, this was the 23rd, uh, this was basically, this was when training camp started. He admitted that he asked to be moved to a contender. So where will he land? We're going to look at that. We're also going to look at a few other things here. Uh, he's been in constant communication uh, with his family and with uh, management about the matter and remains hopeful they can accommodate his request. So now it has come out for sure. And it used to be that um, they wanted first three, three first round picks. It's now believed he wants one or two first round picks, a top prospect or a good young NHL player as part of the, as part of the return. One or two first round picks. So maybe, so this is the way I see that. Why would you say one or two first, a good round prospect, or a good young player? So he would take two first round picks, one first round pick and a prospect, one first round pick and a good young player. That's what I get from there. That's what I would read if I'm a <clears throat> manager and I'm looking from another team at getting Jacob Chikrin. So that's a lot better than the videos we did before. You can go take a look at those too. I did one about two months ago, and I did one at the trade deadline on Jacob Chikrin and what the return would be. The return at the time was three first-round picks. It sounded pretty steep, but I mean, what do we uh, – first of all, let's look at just one more article here. I said I would do two, so let's do two. Uh, D Darren Drager updated, this is, was what, October 2nd. Darren Drager from TSN said that trade talks were getting very, uh, were, were more active than they've been in recent months. Getting active. Um, they specifically named the Columbus Blue Jackets, and we're going to take a look at the Columbus Blue Jackets in this video as a potential suitor for Chickren Services. Um, basically the reason why that I, th that, uh, he, the Arizona Coyote or sorry, the Columbus Blue Jackets were named here was because they were interested before and apparently Chikrin wasn't. 
interested in part of because they weren't really a legitimate playoff contender. So now that they got Goudreau, apparently he's fine with that. He's informed those close to him. So I find that funny. He's informed those close to him that he is now willing to join Columbus in a trade. So those close to him told you that? I guess you must be one of those close to him. I don't know. But it is Darren Drager, and he has a reputation to uphold at TSN. They don't usually go all willy-nilly with this type of stuff. Anyways, so we will just say that it is very possible that um, Jacob could be part of going to Columbus, and we'll take a look at that in a second. But we're going to look at other teams as well, and we're going to look at Arizona and what they may want. Let's just say everything. Like the best there the best position for them probably is up the middle with Nick Schmaltz and Barrett Heighton, who is just a young Barrett Heighton, still young and has a lot of upside. Could eventually turn into a solid number two, maybe even a number one, but probably a solid number two. But even at that, and Nick Schmaltz had a hell of a year last year. Um I he can be a number one and and that's fine. A better number one is always better, right? But um, I would say like really the wings and defense. Gosh, to Spear and Dyson Mayo, God bless them. They just aren't top two defensemen, so they could definitely use that. They can, uh, of course, the first round picks. They're in rebuild mode. So number one picks, picks for days, everything that they can possibly get to build this team into a dynasty is what they'd be looking for. They have, they, they're starting to build up a pretty good squad of young players right now with Josh Doan and Logan Cooley and, um, you know, Artem Duda on defense. There's, there's a lot of good young players coming up, but they can use more. They can use more, and that's pretty much what they'll be looking for. Uh, let's look at Jacob Chikrin. Jacob Chikrin, 24 years old. I think he's turning 25 years old this year. Three years left at 4.6, which is solid for the type of player you're getting. This is one of the things that's the big uh, selling point of Chikrin. It is is a very reasonable contract. Uh, a moderate no movement clause the next two years after this, and then the cap goes up and they can start looking at possibly signing them. They being whatever team picks them up. Now, one of the things that can be difficult is Chikrin does have leverage in his own right to maybe make it difficult for Arizona, where Arizona loses leverage is if Jacob Chikrin really starts saying, I'm not going to sign long-term with you and stuff like that to teams down the road. That would definitely lessen the leverage. Um, but so far, it seems like Jacob Chikrin has put a pretty good open palette out there for teams that he would go to, which is going to help Arizona a lot. It'll get the deal done faster, and uh, they will be able to, he'll be able to move on to a, more of a contending team. So... I'm going to start out with an interesting one that I'm putting at the bottom of the list, this being a team, that is, that he may go to, and that is the San Jose Sharks. But, Perlo, you said that he wanted to go to a contender. Yes, I know. San Jose is not really what you call a contender. But San Jose is a team... That isn't really not a contender in a sense. Like, they really are motivated, I think, to rebuild this super fast. They're not in a market where they want to go six, seven years down the road before they're a contender. So I think Mike Greer, their new general manager, is been asked to do quite the balancing act of making this team legitimate super fast. And if they can sell that to Chikrin, he just may decide that this isn't a bad place. San Jose is a beautiful place to live, and 
you know, I'm sure if he's talking to his wife and stuff, they they do have Eric Carlson and Mario Ferrero there. Uh, they did bring up young guys in like guys like Lynn Blom and um, Kevin LeBanc might not be there in this deal because San Jose doesn't have much cap space and they would likely have to do a player for player trade. Now, all this being said, I think they'd have to do a really good selling job to get Chick Room to go there because they really, if his agent is wise, he's probably going to be going, I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. There's a really good chance this team is going to just have to blow it up and rebuild completely. They just traded Burns for, you know, cap space and a couple picks. So their selling job might be cool and all that, but I don't know if I'm totally going to fall on it. And I think ultimately probably Chickren would be, look, I just came from Arizona. I want a little more for sure than San Jose. But let's say they were able to convince them. You could put, they. I, I think that they would consider their 2023 first here. Top five protected. Top five protected. Now, Arizona is still going to get a solid player, assuming it's top. If they if they manage, if San Jose manages to not be the top five worst, or if they win, manage to not win the lottery and get in the top five, if they're lower than the top five to begin with. If not, it would be a 2024 unprotected. So... I think, and I think Arizona would have some uh, Arizona would have some interest in that pick, no doubt about that. Uh, Arizona would probably be very interested in this. However, San Jose is also going to have to give a player back, and I think that player likely would be somebody like Kevin LeBanc, who I just brought up. Four point seven. Uh, Chikrin is at four point two. If you want to know where all about Chikrin, go back in the video. If you haven't watched it all already, you should be watching all of them. All of it, tell you more about it. And then top five protected number one. LeBanc isn't really what Arizona needs, but to get that top five protected number one, I think they would go through this hoop. I think they would. That is going to be an enormous pick this year. 2023 has got a lot of fantastic players. Now, that being said, for San Jose. So why would San Jose give him up, Perlo? Because that player is going to take a while. Chikrin's already ready. And if whatever player they're going to pick there, if it's six, six or lower, is as good as Chikrin, I think they'd be very happy with that. So this would speed up their rebuild, give them a good young player who's I've heard has had Norris possibilities down the road. And... Give them an opportunity to rebuild fast. Now, there's one thing else I would like to forgot to bring up when I was doing, uh, looking at Jacob Chikrin is he does have recently some injury issues, but from what I understand, they're not something that should cause a problem long term. Okay, St. Louis Blues. The St. Louis Blues are part of this package, or in as one of the teams, mostly because it was very rumored that they were in it. Um, I almost didn't put it in because when I look at St. Louis, you have a team that is, okay, they got a little calf space now, not much, basically, you know, on the line. And, but they got to sign... Ryan O'Reilly, they could let Tarasenko walk because he already asked for a trade, and maybe Tarasenko will just walk. You know, he refuses to sign with St. Louis, I don't know, because of some medical stuff that happened before, and he lost trust in the organization and stuff like that. I, 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 I don't know. If that's the case, then they could have the cap space to sign Ryan O'Reilly and get a guy like Chikrin. My issue is, where does he fit on the defense? Um, honestly, he's way better than Nick Letty, and he's better than he's probably going to be considerably better than Krug. 
and he can play the right side. So that's huge. But is Arizona really going to want to take back a Justin Falk in this deal? And actually, they wouldn't be able to anyways. Because he has a no-trade clause, as does Nick Letty. All of these guys have no-trade clauses in their contract. And it wouldn't matter if it was five teams. Pretty positive Arizona is going to be on that list of teams that they don't want to go to. So the only way I see this deal happening is if Robert Bertuzzo is part of it, possibly. Chikrin can play the right side very well. So they would have one hell of a deep defense. A very deep defense. And that's what they're going for, I suppose. So it would be Bertuzzo, their 2023 first, see ya, and maybe even their 2024 first. But I think they'd even have to make more space. 950000 Yeah, it would have to be another player. Yeah. It would have to be another player yet. Yeah, I just – tell me, St. Louis fans, where you think this is going to work out for you. You got Scott Perunovic here. Maybe Marco Scandella. Marco Scandella and Robert Bertuzzo. That would make up the – and so and then you give up like two firsts to go with it to get a chick run because they don't need Scandella. They don't need Bertuzzo. But they'll take them on if they're going to get your first, maybe, especially two firsts. That's the only way I see this deal working. Tell me what you think, Blues fans. Would you do something like that? St. Louis isn't known for trading their first-round picks, by the way. They like picking players that they know are going to be happy in St. Louis, and they're very good at it and developing their own. So that's why I have them low on the list. Comment in the comment section, sub up to my YouTube channel. Let me know what you think about that. Next, Anaheim Ducks. And I haven't heard any rumors about Anaheim being in on Chikrin. Tell you that right now. I haven't. But it appears Anaheim is also very quiet about stuff. They do moves where it comes right out of the blue. When they traded Lindholm, it was right out of the blue. Manson was kind of known about a little bit. But that being said, I have them lower on the list of possibilities, but I really like the possibility at the same time. Vakaninen gets injured again. He had injury problems in Boston. He's injured again. Um, they appear to be building this team with offensive defensemen first. Then they brought in a guy like Dmitry Kulikov, who's great defensively. Borderline elite, actually. Probably to help these young guys be able to play defense as well as offense. Chikrin is average defensively. For a, 2000, for a 24-year-old, that's not bad when you consider the offense he can bring to the table. So, I just think Anaheim would be interested in this play. Um, I don't know if Vakaninen, they would move him right away. They have $15 million in cap space. So they could work out a deal for the surplus of forwards that they have right now. Now, if I'm Arizona, I'm going, I want Isaac Lindstrom in your 2024 first. Well, I want your 2023 first. But if I'm Anaheim, I'm going, no, nah, I'm not giving you the 2023 first. And Isaac Lindstrom. I'm really hating the idea of getting rid of uh, moving Eric Lindstrom. But he's probably going to be a second line center level player. And somewhere down the road, he's going to look at this and go, hmm, Mason McTavish, where do I fit? Am I, do I want to be a third line center my whole life? You know, maybe him himself would be like, how about we try to move me on and uh, so I can have an opportunity to be a top six guy somewhere? Could be wrong. He can also play left wing, but I think he's kind of wasted there. He's a fantastic center, an amazing, two, a really good two-way young guy. 
So Isaac Lindstrom, the 2024 first seems uh, when you're looking at the asking price of what he was saying, a good young player and a first round pick that fits the bill and gives uh, Anaheim a pretty strong defense. If there's a lot of teams out there and you got to maybe throw a little extra in, maybe a guy like Josh Mahura should get a shot somewhere else now that he has basically, you know, he's 24. He struggled to make the lineup for quite a while now. Maybe give him a chance in in uh, in Arizona where he would have a really good chance to play. Something like that. Sub up to the channel, Anaheim Ducks fans, and let me know if you would do something like that in the comment section. Subscribe to my channel. Okay, we mentioned it in the article, the Columbus Blue Jackets. It was mentioned in the article that they would be interested, and I don't have them high in my list. I, I, I know there was a lot of interest early. There was talk of them being very interested. And I know that they have said that they do, would like to upgrade on defense. Now, that was before they got Eric Goodbranson. That being said, I'm not a big Eric Goodbranson guy. Um, Chikrin can play right or left defense. So let's say they are interested. I would say if they are interested, they maybe not are not high on Jake Bean still. And they have a lot of guys in their lineup that are very similar. Warensky, Boquist. Boquist is growing very well, though. Um, and, uh, you know, Gavrikov sort of in the same vein. Maybe a guy like Jake Bean could be used here. Erica Branson could move down. And uh, Chikrin could play on the right side with Gavrikov. Now, They'd have to find out if Eric Branson can play his off wing. Uh, and Jake Bean would get a really good opportunity in Arizona to really be what he always wanted to be. And that's, he's, I remember when he was in Carolina, they were asking him about, he kind of asked for a trade in a sense where he just basically said he want he believes he's a top two defenseman and wants a chance at it. I'm not sure he has a chance out of here with Wierenski either, but he certainly would with Arizona. So they could do that. They, they're they they're capped out, so they're going to need to do more than that. They need need to put another player in here somewhere. Um, maybe a guy like Gustav Nyquist. Uh, put Kent Johnson up there. Gustav Nyquist is, what, a 2023 free agent? Not all that valuable to Arizona, but to make a deal work where they got Jake Bean and 2023 first, possibly top five protected. This is going to be the hot commodity for any team out there that's rebuilding that 2023 first. Plus they get a Jake Bean that is a pretty solid defenseman for 24 years old. Um, and Nyquist is usable. You know, uh, I don't, does he have, better take a look here. I don't think he has a no trade clause. No, he doesn't have a no trade clause too. So he would just have to go and then he can take off in free agency if he wants or whatever the case may be. But to get that 2023 number first round pick, if it can be a top 10 pick, I think they would like it. Would Columbus be willing to do that? Possibly. If they're really bullish on Chikrin, and Chikrin has been mentioned several times as eventual Norris Trophy candidate, I think they might. I think they might. It would just be very difficult to fit him into the lineup. But if they like him as much as a lot of people do, sub up to my channel, Columbus Blue Jackets fans. Let me know if you like that deal. For Jacob Chikrin. Subscribe to the channel and comment in the comment section. The Vancouver Canucks is next. And uh, this is simply because I think they're going to be after every young defenseman out there. And they're going to do everything they can to get anyone that's available. Especially that's as good as Jacob Chikrin. Why? 
because their defense is bad. Tyler Myers had one of his better years in the second half last year. Got to say. But he's really not that – even then he was below average defensively. And as you can tell, he's not – he doesn't make up for it with his offense. Such a great package, a skater and everything, but never put it really put it all together. Oliver Ekman Larson is meh at 31 years old. He's certainly not worth his contract. Quinn Hughes is their best defenseman, and he's offensive defenseman. Chikrin can play the right side. Now, a lot of people are going to be like, we don't need left defensemen. Chikrin can play the right. Doesn't even seem to be bothered by it. So, and I've heard they were going to experiment with Quinn Hughes on the right. It looks like that experiment hasn't worked well because they have him on cap friendly on the lefty. Who goes back? Well, first of all, the 2023 first round pick would be gone. Uh, you got to make the money work because they're capped out. It's going to have, they've got a lot of work. Oh, geez, I just thought about this. I wonder. If this is the time for Bo, Ho- Bo Horvat to move, Jacob Chikrin for Bo Horvat um, might even have to go a little more than Bo Horvat, a pick or something like that to make it work. But Vancouver is stacked up the middle with Pedersen and JT Miller. Let's face it. Um, Bo Horvat, I don't know if they're going to be able to find a place for him. They're running out of cap space. He needs a contract in 2023. And I know that the cap is going to be going up, but Pedersen's going to take that second line spot. Are they going to want to pay Horvat seven to eight, seven million dollars, say? A year? He's a 30 some goal scorer. I don't care what you say. He's a 30 goal scorer. On the market, unless he takes a big discount and just takes six, maybe it's okay. And them needing defense as bad as they do, I would say this is trading from a place of strength to uh, build up that defense, which is desperately needed. I don't know if that would be straight across. Chikrin is projected to be possibly a Norris Trophy candidate down the road. And if you look at a lot of these teams are giving up that 2023 first top protected year, they may have to even give up more than Bo Horvat in this deal, like a second round pick or something like that to make it work. I don't know what Vancouver fans are going to think about this. I think it's going to be split 50-50. There's some people that absolutely love Bo. He's their captain and all of that. And there's others, especially analytic guys, who realize that Bo Horvat defensively is very overrated. And as much as I like his offense, he's 27 years old. He could get a big contract right away. He would get a wonderful opportunity to be the number one center in Arizona. If that's something that would be he'd be happy with. Let me see, does he have a no trade clause? Because if he does... No, and he doesn't have a no trade clause. Arizona would have to talk to him about whether he'd be willing to do a contract extension. And uh, if that didn't work, if they weren't willing to do that, this deal would be off the table in that regard. But they could go a different direction and take uh, Nils Hoglander, the 2023 first, Tucker Pullman, and there are two, like two first round picks in this deal. Because Nils Hoglander is not panning out in Vancouver, apparently. Tucker Pullman, they don't even want him. He would just to be to make the money work. Something like that. I don't even know if that would do it. Maybe a little bit retained or whatever to make the, the make it work. Maybe Jason Dickinson. Something like that. And two first round picks. I think that's less likely, but if Horvat was on the table and he was a possibility and he was willing to sign long-term in Arizona, and I think it's possible he might be willing to do that considering the opportunity you would have there, 
then that would be a deal that I could see Vancouver doing. Tell me what you think, Vancouver Canucks fans. Comment in the comment section and let me know. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and let me know. I do this stuff all the time. And it ain't going to stop. Okay, next. And these are the two big ones. They were the two big ones the last time I did this. The LA Kings. Chikrin is 6'2", 210. If you notice, there's only one player, and he is 36 years old, that adds up to that. Carl, Brant Clark, also. Super young. He's going to be big. He's a big boy. They got a strong defense, but it is small. And that, I'm not totally everything on size, but it does it can play a part on a long season in the playoffs to get ground down quite a bit if you've got a really young defense. And Chickering can bring what anybody on this lineup can bring already. He can play the left side. What I love about this deal for L.A. is they're chock full of right defensemen. They could put a right defenseman in this deal, which is very valuable, to get a left defenseman. Arizona would be happy with that. Who, though? I mean, I'm sure they're going to be asking for Brant Clark, but there's no way. I'm not, do I'm not even doing that. I'm not giving Brad Clark away on the uh, right side defenseman like that in this deal. Jersey would be off offered, but I'm wanting to. They got to, They built this defense up. I don't want to be blowing it all out of the water right now, throwing my defenseman away. I like the solid defense. I'll give you Matt Roy and a package of players that I brought this up before. Apparently, Velarde came into camp. He's looking good. They got him on the second line. He's looking good in camp this year. But they've got Kaliev. They've got Fiala. You could either give Kaliev or give Gabriel Velarde. If it's Kaliev and Matt Roy, you might not have to give up too much. Kaliev's got an incredible shot. I mean, I wouldn't want to give him up. But to get a guy like Chikrin, Maybe. Maybe I would. Roy and Kaliev. If you can get away with it, though, Velarde, Roy, and then I think you would need to give up your 2024 first. I would do that deal. I would do that deal if I was L.A. I might do that deal if I was Arizona. I think that's a fair deal. I think that's a fair deal. Tell me what you think, L.A. Kings fans. Velarde. Matt Roy, and a first-round pick. I don't know if the dollars are going to work out there because let's make sure that the dollars are going to work out for L.A. because I know they are getting pretty tight to the cap now. Half a million in cap space. Maybe just make it. Retain a little bit here and there. Send a couple guys down. I think it would work. Tell me what you think, LA Kings fans. Subscribe to my channel and let me know if you would do a deal like that if you haven't subscribed already. If you already have subscribed, you don't have to subscribe. Don't be afraid to like it too, eh? Don't be forget to hit the like button. Nobody likes to hit my like button. Ottawa Senators! The reason why I have Ottawa Senators number one is, A, rumors for days all over the place that Ottawa could be in. Those rumors make sense. They're, they went out and got Giroux, uh, Debrinkat, Stutzla's coming into his own this year. Everybody believes, and I see the reason why, because he looks fantastic. Joshua Norris got the long contract. Batherson got the long contract. This They got Pinto on their third line, who probably will show that he's a top six centerman down the road. This team can do some damage this year. And it looks like they're like, okay, we got our picks. We're going to now go out there and use them and get some guys. 
like they did with Dabrinka. What do they give in return? I say, um, I think Eric Brandstrom would be interesting for Arizona. Um, he's he's improved every single year, although kind of slowly. But still, I like his game. He's got good. He's got good low, a low center of gravity. He's got good wheels to run it out of the zone. He just hasn't put it quite put it all together yet. Yet, but it looks like he's doing so. He could be a top four guy. He could, you know, it could be a. I think it would be a good move for him. Now there was talk that Nikita Zaitsev would be part of the deal, um, and that would be of no benefit to Arizona. So if Zaitsev's going to be part of the deal, I think they're going to be giving up something significant. The 2023 first Zaitsev, and I heard Ridley Gregg. To get a 2023 first unprotected, Ridley Gregg, I think they might take sides up for that in this deal. Depending on how much they like Ridley Gregg, who looked like he was a pretty solid top six, top nine winger for years to come. And that first 2023 first, Ottawa didn't make the playoffs last year. They don't make it again, and it's unprotected. You never know. And even if it is, like, in the 10 to 15 spot, you're getting a great pick there. You're getting a great pick. Tell me what you think, Ottawa Senators fans. Subscribe to my channel. Personally, for me, this is my personal. If I'm Arizona, I want Shane Pinto. Shane Pinto, Shane Pinto. I want Shane Pinto, Eric. Brandstrom in the 2024 pick, and you can, like, top 10 protect it. That's what I want in that deal. So what would you do for that? Would you do that? I know a lot of people love Shane Pinto, but you got to realize he's probably going to be a top six forward and somewhere down the road he's going to see we have Stutzla and Joshua Norris signed up, and they're going to be like, we can't give you top six money, and he's going to be like, well, I'm out of here then. All right? All right. All right, that's my full 42, boys and girls. That's all I have to give to you today.